Mbappe. Right, so we do actually see, I think Westlaw is a bit in, in a bit of a blast from the past as he's using that Oktoberfest Gragas skin, you know. We are in November now, no more Oktoberfest and I'm quite rather sad for that. But nevertheless, every day can be Oktoberfest, like we always say every day can be a festive occasion. Yeah. Um, you must be missing your beer a lot, huh? Yeah, of course, maybe. I mean, who, Gra who just... Gra Gragas never misses his beer because it's always on his side. <laughs> So anyway, let's just take a look at what's happening with AHQ as well as SAJ. It seems that AHQ may go for Delay Invade or actually just force their way through the jungle, get some deep wards, get some good vision to actually spot out lanes because Shivana, I've said before, Shivana's quite a lane bully and Pride may have some difficulties even as Shen dealing with her. Right, I think at this point of time, it does look like Saigon Jokers are kind of playing some mind games here because looking at the setup and the positioning for the lineup here, it does look like Sakon Jokers might be the one initia initiating the lane swap. As we do see Juni might he is he gonna go for that face check though, he's just gonna Oh and flash that flash out, of the, out of the shadow dash. That's really really close. Cool. So a flash burn from Juni. And it seems that HQ is just gonna back off from the warded tri brush. Right, and the thing to take note about facing off against HQ is that I always call them the masters of the early game. Just because they always tend to go for this, you know, really right from the start, yeah, early game aggression, right from level or right as the minions leave the base. So I think that's something that Psycho Jokers have felt before as well. So they would want to kind of consider that when they, you know, place the lineups. Yeah, and it seems that a lot of river wards going down from both sides. We actually have two, three wards coming in from SAJ, whereas two wards on the side of AHQ. I realize right. that we are not in colorblind mode. Right, we will be pushing that up. Where is uh, right there, right there. Ah, oh, there you go. Right. We apologize for this slight. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, colorblind mode see, enabled. That's right. So we do see the lane swap coming in for this one, and, and I'm look not at the sure. aggression from Westdorf. Right, he has known. He has been known to be the aggressor of his lane, and that's the thing about Westdorf as well. You know, we have always talked about him being this rather passive at the start, but once he gets a few items in, then he will be this hyper-roaming, hyper-aggressive carry at the mid-game stage. And I think he's just sticking to his plan here. I mean, if it's working out, you don't really need to switch it up. And oh my goodness, the burst damage coming out from Garden Devil at level 1, just taking two pot shots to face QTV is actually taking... And you were talking about the lane swap earlier, I was actually hoping not... I was... Not, I, I'm actually surprised to see SAJ pull off um, the one to actually initiate the lane swap. Yeah, precisely, because the thing is, you, when you have this Shyvana and this Shen matchup, like we were talking about it earlier, Shyvana definitely stands the edge, especially in early game. So I think it was them kind of just anticipating that HQ might go for the lane swap, that's why they just went ahead and did this initiation anyway. But it kind of just backfired on that, that sense. But if they can make something out of it, then it's not the worst decision ever. Yeah, and look at both what NAS and Safety are doing. They're kind of mirroring each other, and it's kind of predictable that Safety would really want to use the Blubber and Archie to get the, the turret down as fast as possible. So what HQ decides to do is actually send NAS to the top lane and just try to defend this turret as much as possible. That's right, but in the sense, if you have three members up in the top lane, I would say I would give the advantage over to Saigon Jokers here just because of that. You know, like you mentioned earlier, the Blood Boy advantage and the Tau Pao as well is able to poke down on the turret all so quickly. As you see at this point of time, we can't stop relentless pouncing on this turret. Yeah, and, and at on the bottom lane, we actually get yeah, QTB trying to pick up as much farm as um, he can under the turret alone. So it's taken quite a bit of burst damage from the Morgana and, and Lucian combo. I think QTB is just going to back off, maybe pick up a few more pots just to sustain himself in the lane. Right, and it's a very worrying situation down at the bottom lane. So, because of the aggression that Garner Devil and Green Tea they are able to put out onto QTV, there, then you know it's gonna be quite troublesome for them when yep. they try to fend off the aggression. It's, it is going to be troublesome. But one good thing about this, you know, junglers showing themselves out in the top lane, it just means that the mid laners can do it one v one duke it out in the mid lane and uh, actually they're doing pretty well both mid laners are kind of even in the cs even in about the health bars as well so let's just see you know who gets the early level six and decides to go for the roam 
in the once once they hit level six. Well, I think it's a distinctive playstyle for both teams, where they don't generally want to touch the mid lane. Even the sense they are quite comfortable with their mid laners and their strengths, especially for Westlaw, you know, like we always talk about it. He is the kind that would just farm up in the lane, make sure that he has a few items in before he starts to make anything happen. And because of that, we don't generally see the jungler for HQ Esports Club to kind of want to snowball him ahead because just that they, they know that he'll be comfortable by himself. Yeah, and both turrets seem to be going down extremely low. I think both Garner Devil as well as Green Tea doing a very good job harassing the turret. And on the, on the side of SAJ's, the, the three man pushed up in the top lane doesn't seem to be stopping anytime. And Pride and Nas very likely going to just give up this turret. Right, so, in a sense, I would say the, this rotation coming in from Saigon Jokers have worked really well for them because they've managed to force. HQ away from the lane and you know at this point of time Second Joker still have their bottom turret out but it does look like it will go down in that in this one exchange. Yeah it should probably go down at by this wave or at least the next wave one more hit is gonna oh, do it. So go. yeah Green Tea being the good guy taking one shot for turret from the turret just to take it down. So between both teams still very equal and I think we have to give props to Saigon Jokers to kind of you know, they know what to do to face up against AHQ Esports Club. Not give up too much kills and, you know, just stick to your rotations because the thing about AHQ Esports Club as well is that they are pretty good at punishing people when they go for their rotations. So if they stick to the lanes and make sure that um, things happen, then, you know, it's not going to be too much of trouble. But at this point in time, we do see AHQ having that four-man advantage going to go for this early dragon. And this will be one of the key deciding factors, I would say, for them when they want to try to snowball their advantages. Yeah, and speaking about snowballing advantages, I think both teams have decent threats coming into the mid and late game. So having that global gold in itself is definitely going to help the transition from early game to mid game. Having the items to actually win the team fights is going to be very key in this game, especially. That's right, but I would say for, for Saigon Jokers, it's all or nothing for them because when they have this Shyvana pick and together with the bomb delivery system, if they don't pull off that combo, then you know, effectively you are just wasting this composition potential that you have. And for a lot of teams, especially in the Garena Premier League, they have kind of worked around all those wombo combo potentials that most teams try to pull off. So it's a worrying sign for them because if they do manage to pull it off, then definitely they will have the upper hand. But if they don't, then it's going to be quite difficult for them. And it's very crucial as well for this Wombo combo to always have their pieces in check because they are like a jigsaw puzzle. They need everyone to be there for it to work. Yeah, and, and I agree. But if they actually decide to pull a split push strap, we may see the... We, it may be on the onus of Optimus to actually position the ball very well. The ball delivery system need not happen, but as long as Optimus can pull off a 2k EO shockwave, that's definitely going to win them some teeth. 2k EO shockwave, yes. I like the way you call it. It has been a while since I've heard that term, but... What, what do you call it now? Challenger shockwave? I, I don't know. Challenger Tri Challenger 20th position shockwave? Like, and above? Like Challenger tier shockwave? Ch yeah, Challenger tier shockwave. Uh, I think that's a good way to A Challenger tier shockwave is a challenge to hit it. Oh wow, I see what you did there. And oh jeez. <laughs> but anyway, now we see the QTV and Pride's matchup coming in in the top lane. And QTV being really false to the wall here, he's just going in you know, onto Pride as much as possible. Having no vision at all in the red side jungle of HQ, so that's really brave indeed. But as we know, QTV being the Shivana can actually just use Burnout to run away or maybe even the Dragon's Descent to actually just get away and oh my goodness Archie taken down extremely you know Nas missed the knockup combo but I think Archie will go down the red buff tick is actually slowing out trying to life steal away from the minions get as much creep power as possible and the first blood will go to Nas and in that time we actually had Garner Devil chasing out Juni Juni still manages to survive that fight well, I think it was a little lost there he didn't know what was the best place to run to so he decided to just run into the opposition's direction there yeah. But nevertheless, a very good rotation coming from HQ Esports Club and this is the reason why they are considered the early game masters because they like to just punish and make sure that they just keep, you know, not give their opponents any breathing space at all like what we saw there and Pride's actually coming up ahead in this trade against QTV here. Yeah, the custom minions doing a little bit too much damage for QTV to actually just stay up in that lane itself. And we actually have Nas coming in for some counter jungling. We actually, you were talking about it earlier, safety 
not playing a jungle that he a type of jungle that he's super familiar with. He usually likes to go for the all-in carry, hyper carry aggressive junglers. But this time he's actually playing Nunu, so he's just gonna be happy, smiting, consuming that big golem and just taking the jungle for himself. Not doing much counter jungling, just kind of roaming the map, giving blood boil to Archie, maybe giving blood boil to Optimus and oh, the there we go. Oh my goodness, the cataclysm comes in. Optimus stuck inside the shot wave will only hit Nas and Optimus taken solo the flash and auto attack will give Westlord the kill. And safety in a little bit of trouble using the snowball to hit Nas. Actually, a lot of damage on Nas. Use the flag. Oh, the super, super mega, mega death rocket just barely misses. And uses the snowball as well as the absolute zero with the flash to actually pick up the kill onto Nas. So great play coming in from safety. So he still uses Nunu in a hyper aggressive way. <laughs> That's right. And I, I didn't know that that was even possible coming in from that Yeti combination there. And I, I like it, you know, it, he just finished off Nas with so much style and. And I would, I would say consider that as pretty flashy game. Just flash in there, use the absolute zero, lock him down to place and then finish that off for himself. Yeah, and I think what happened in the mid lane, it was a one for one trade mid laner for jungler. So I think SAJ would have preferred that, you know, Optimus didn't get caught out there, but the combination of the Cataclysm and a great pinpoint explosive cast positioning was really did, you know, kind of put Optimus off out of position and giving Westor the kill. Okay, so we are going to see Westall now finishing up their Shadows of Harmony. So he will look to finish that up into the Unholy Grill soon. And that's where we'll start to see him, you know, being all so comfortable just sitting by himself in the mid lane. Yeah, and here we had Nas kind of camping um, QTB there. So a little bit of a dangerous position for QTB to be in. That's right. And it's quite important for the Saigon Jokers now to kind of make sure that, you know, they have their map being watered up already because at this point of time, it's at a stage where Nath actually has the Cataclysm so he will be able to roam around, make full use of that ultimate and between QTB and Pride, so they are just comfortable dueling up it up in the top lane but that's the important part Yeah, and Junior actually gets caught by the Dark Mining and the Garner Devil combination of first Yen's in Tibbers has been summoned but Garner Devil and Green Sea would just walk away from that fight Safety wanted to join the fight, put in maybe an Ice Ball to Actually, either slow green, slow green tea or Ghana Devil, but no. Nas is actually in the flanks, trying to hit onto safety, so he wanted to come in for the counter initiation. May go in for the flag toss combo. No, Ghana Devil is there for any backup if anything does happen. And it seems that the bot lane, Archie and Junior, are just going to back off from this aggression. They don't want to fight just yet. And actually, we do see a kill in the mid lane as we do see we're still picking up one more kill on Optimus that we have missed that and we might see a replay of that soon but that's one more kill secured for him there and I don't know man, the way I would describe Nas at this point of time is like McDonald's just because he's just everywhere yeah <laughs> why is McDonald's everywhere? He, oh, well, the thing about it is almost everywhere so mm. it, it will be a very apt way to describe Nas here yeah so we're gonna take a look at the replay of the mid lane kill so we actually have Westall trying to roam down and actually catches Optimus off the side the shockwave does come up but I think the explosive cast will knock him to the side of the wall the dissonance will not be able to slow him down just yet the command protect doesn't come in in time to save uh, um, the life of Optimus and Pride taken down extremely low in the top lane there QTV has used his ultimate and it seems that Westall Right, we do see Westdoor now moving into the fray there using that barrel roll yeah. to spot out QTB as well. Yeah, the barrel hit and the burnout does come out. The flag toss combo not getting close enough and he actually jukes the barrel to the side. So safety coming in for the blood boy. The movement speed boost will definitely save QTB now. And QTB, great jukes. Great jukes in the lane. Right, and there's some upcoming changes for Gragas as well in the upcoming patch, but we'll leave that for later as we do see Westor now getting caught in some trouble there and not using this Cataclysm to try to lock Optimus into place but a quick disengage from Saigon Jokers there so they will get out into safety. Yeah, uh, a few ultimates burned there. Westdor still had his explosive cast up. I think that was why SAJ didn't want to take that fight. Get, being disrupted in the back line, get, being you know, kind of pincered down 3 on 1, that's not a good place to be, especially if Gragas has the explosive cast up. Right, in the meanwhile, we do see Garden Devil finishing up the Trinity Force already, so even more burst damage as we hit into the mid game stage. So this time around, HQ Esports Club not having the most, I would say, most fruitful aggressive start, but they do still have that kill advantage, three to one. Yeah, and two kills on the West Door. West Door is a very happy man. Going to be very happy on the Gragas itself. That's right, and also they have to secure that early dragon as well. So 
very, you know, calculated early start for them. Even though I would say this is not the most aggressive and most fruitful one. Yeah. But I think having that gold advantage in the early game may actually help them in the next dragon fight because dragon is already up. And that may be the next point of contention coming in for both teams SAJ, QCB, and Pry is actually dealing on the top lane QCB, not very healthy in that fight. But I guess between you know both teams, the important consideration is the team fight. You know we all we have always kind of said that this wombo combo coming in from Tiger Dukas is very very strong. But if Westdog can get into position to separate everyone out there, as actually we do see some engage on Tunas and the Black Shoe just nullifies the Tibbers engagement coming in there. Yeah, safety still a very tanky boss. The Soul Shackles actually being flashed out from safety. Optimus at the side, Green T as well as Garner Devil taking low. The Super Mega Dev Rocket actually misses the Dark Binding misses, but Archie on the sidelines does manage to take down Green T first. He's still chasing onto Westall. Westall actually gets hit by the slow D. Knockback doesn't actually you know, kind of just saved his life there because he managed to pull away all four members of SAJ. Right, I would say it's a very, very messy fight coming in from both teams. A very, you know, very obvious uh, movement coming in from Naze that he wanted to take out the wards surrounding the Dragon Pit, but instead, you know, he just bumped into some of the Saigon Joker's members and he, you know, he took a ton of damage from that, but it was his teammate that kind of paid for his life there. Yeah, and QTV going in with the dissonance as well as the ball to just try to you know, bend them away from this mid turret actually keeps the mid turret alive. Optimus and QTB will continue to chase on the Price. Price taking a lot of damage. He made Shadow Dash over the wall, but Garner Devil is there. QTB in a little tough, tough spot there, but he's still gonna continue to chase on to Nas. And in the mid lane itself, some aggression coming in from both Optimus and Safety. It's. I think the aggression is just gonna die, die, die out soon. So QTP just wants to do a little bit of counter jungling, and Ooh. the smite actually comes out from Nasa and says, "No, that's gonna be my rave. You're not gonna take my rave away from me." So now we do see Saigon Jokers moving around to the dragon pit. So it's gonna be them who want to go for this objective there, but HQ will be around the area to you know to spot that out for themselves and possibly even contest for it. Yeah, they do start the dragon and they actually get the dragon. The dragon's Ooh. descent actually coming from QTV, but the dark binding will stop QTV in his track. So in that dragon fight, nothing happened. Green T did went down previously and HQ responds with the middle turret. So the SAJ will get dragon, but actually a fight breaks out. Optimus taken down extremely low, being caught there in the dragon pit. Do not know what he was doing there. And a kill will go on to Garner Devil. Garner Devil going to be a very happy for that kill. That's right. And you know, at this point of time, he already has the Trinity Force and feeling that kill over to him just to make sure that he will scale up to be that scary marksman that he, will, he can be and do see QTV fending off the entire squad of HQT for club there and safety now with the final snowball picking up the kill onto Green T there and a counter kill coming in from Pride. So it was a one for one trade. And Saiyan Jokers managed to push HQ Esports Club away from their second tier mid turret. So they managed to, you know, just kind of stop the bleeding there. Yeah, not one, not top one of the best absolute zeros we've seen. And the fact that QTB actually, you know, used his Dragon's Descent earlier in that team fight that happened somewhere near Dragon, I think they were quite happy to just duel it out with QTB because he didn't have his ultimate up just yet. Right, so, but I think between both teams, it's still very, very equal at this point of time. So they do exchange objectives after objectives, but this time around, we do see HQ coming up slightly on top with that 1.4k goalie. Yeah, Optimus now taking his own blue buff. He's gonna be very happy with the cooldown reduction as well as the mana regen. Oh, actually doesn't oh. take the blue buff, actually resets a little bit. And now he actually goes for the blue buff. QTV gonna deal with Pride in the top lane. They both have a Sunfire Cape, so they're just gonna duke it out. The Shadow Dash comes out and Pride's gonna take a little bit of damage from that trade. QTV also suffering some trades in there top lane but look at the rotations coming in from Garnet sorry from Green Tea as well as Nas they're gonna just pin oh, QTV QTV is gonna be in a world of hurt very soon the dark biting does come out it will land and will they follow up on the aggression no it seems that that's not the case because they may want to respond to this mid lane push coming in from Optimus as well as safety that's right but I would say given the potential coming in with Shimana pick is you know, the thing about Shivana is that you're kind of really like a dragon. You have an optimal amount of growth potential. You, are, you might be losing in the trades now, but once you get a few items in, then 
you know, from a baby dragon and you'll start to grow into an adult dragon where you'll be this fearsome, ferocious creature that everyone just fears. Yeah, and the Ooh. look at the amount of damage that's being that the turret has taken so far. The Archie Juni split push is, uh, is actually working, so they... And in response, HQ doing a very good job of just taking down turret after turret, so a one-for-one -one turret trait. HQ only has that mid. Turret left the shortwave oh. misses after the dash from Garner Devil, so that was a miss ultimate, and I think that HQ may go for a fight very shortly, knowing that the shockwave will be down for a while. But do you see that explosive cast that came out of West Lord down at the bottom lane? Okay. I, I like the way he did it, you know, he just threw it there and then he just walked off after that. It's Cool Guys doesn't look at explosions. No, Cool Guys don't look at explosions at all. West Lord picking up his own blue buff and wanted to fend away that bot lane push, unable to do it, but HQ in response does take the top lane turret, so very good from both sides. Right, it's almost like these two teams are just so familiar with each other, reading each other's movements, so they often more or not just treat objective for objective. And you know, that, that is what just makes this match neck to neck, neck to neck, in front of time. Yeah, definitely. And you know, the gold difference at 20 minutes is only at 1.5 thousand gold, so not a very high goal advantage. It seems that Archie and QTV may be pairing up just to go for some form of push. The Dragon will be up in 2 minutes time, not an objective yet for Q, for sorry for HQ to take, but SAJ may put their eyes on the mid turret very shortly. That's right, but I think given how this the pace of this game is going at this point in time, I would say if it drags longer into the 30 minutes or even the 40 minutes mark, I would, I would give the advantage over to the Saigon Jokers just because of their picks and how well their skill sets just sync with each other. The rest on the side of HQ Esports Club, they kind of have this contradiction with each other because you know the explosive cast just kind of blows everyone away and that's not what you want to do when you have a Morgana support. You want to keep everyone in with the Soul, soul Shacker. Yeah, the Soul Shackle is definitely going to be used by Green Sea very effectively trying to zone out some champions or trying to root some champions into place. But the Oracles on Juni going to be put into good use there, trying to clear out as many wards as possible. Naz is the one with the Oracles on the side of AHQ and a few pink wards coming in for both lanes. So it seems that AHQ knows where Saigon Jokers want to go next and it's going to be the mid lane turret and they will want to flank that push when the time comes. Right, and it's very important for them to respond to that as well because if Saigon Jokers at this point of time they manage to grab their foothold again to make sure that they you know manage to take out an objective once again then they will be in the position to be in the driving seat. Actually we do see Nason caught out in the middle of nowhere. And a great flag toss combo coming in. The Dragon's Descent will push Naz back a little bit and Archie will pick up the kill. Gonna be very happy if that two kills onto himself has a blood sister and a zeal and they may just go for the turret. And possibly a dragon after there. A dragon will be up in another 20 seconds or 15 seconds. And let's just see how much damage they can put on this turret. Optimus being caught by that. Thing. And a great explosive cast comes in and he actually flashes out. West Lord does flash out as well. Picking up the kill for that. The command shockwave was used, but the you know he died just before anything can happen. So a great pickup from HQ. A fantastic explosive barrel coming in. And the absolute zero green team being caught there, taking a lot of damage. Safety caught completely out position. Eats a shadow. Dash to the face and Garner Devil will pick up the kill. Tibbers does come out and they pick up the 50 gold. Garner Devil gets that 50 gold as well from Tibbers. Right, a very quick response coming in with the Dark Binding landing onto Optimus there and we're still following up with a very beautiful, you know, explosive card just knocking him right back into his team and with HQ picking up that counter kill. Oh with my goodness, they're going for the Baron at this point in time. They know wow. that safety is down. Can they do Baron fast enough? I would say it's a very, very dangerous decision, but they managed to pull it off, then they would have effectively secured a very good objective, but this time around, we do see Juni just going right off the bat. I guess that was just a bait for them. Yeah, that was definitely a bait, and now we actually have two members of SAJ down, QTV, standing on top of a pink wall, so they knew that SAJ will be coming for the Baron um, wow. to, to actually disengage them for the Baron, but instead HQ laid out that trap and you know kind of set off the trap card for HQ. So they just destroyed both Juni as well as Archie in that in uh, that you attack. You have activated my trap card, says HQ. Yeah, and you know they kind of paid the price for it. SAJ loses two members and they may lose the Dragon as well. QTV going to the bot lane to try to put some pressure onto the bot lane turret and Nas being the 
mobile oracles trying to sweep out as many wards as possible and place as many deep wards as they can to spot any sort of rotations coming from SAJ. I, I like that he's still continuing to do that despite the fact that in that previous one minute he actually got caught out by the members of Saigon Jokers there but you know HQ was able to kind of secure the counter kill so not too much of an issue for him. Yeah, Ward goes down just to spot out the Dragon Timer, but AHQ definitely going to pick up this Dragon. It seems that SAJ wants no business at this Dragon, so the smite, a clean smite for the Dragon, and HQ picks up their third Dragon of the game. That's right, so that would put them at a goal advantage, close to about 4,000 at this point of time, and let's take into account what has happened so far. At this point of time, between Westlaw and Garden Devil, these two carries for the side of HQ Esports Club are sitting at a rather comfortable position. They have no deaths on them, having three kills each on their uh, on their end and you know they have been involved in most of the fights that have broken out so far and you can you compare that to what has you know gone down for Optimus. He's he's just sitting on 0-4 at this point of time and he's not at the position where he would want to be in because for the Orianna pick to be effective you would want to let him sorry let her snowball for a little bit just that little bit right from the start. At, at this point of time, you, if you don't have that edge that you need, you will end up being a kind of like a utility pick for Saigon Jokers at this point of time. Yeah, and not only that, it seems that the ward vision coming from both sides have not extended past the river just yet. It just shows how well both teams have been using their oracles to sweep out vision in the enemy in the enemy jungle, uh, in their own jungle to prevent enemy vision. And QTP actually dealing with price. QTP is taking a chunk of damage from their Volpo Blade. They're gonna be very wary of that, doesn't want to be caught out of position again in, in the bot lane. Right, and QTB finishing up that Bilge Water Cutlass, looking to form up that Blade of the Ruin King real soon, and I guess that would be the turning point for him, when he wants to go up, you know, dueling up against Pride at this point in time. Yeah, and I don't know why he decides to pick up the Bilge Water Cutlass at this point of time. I think that the amount of burst damage coming from HQ is going to be extremely significant. He may get busted down a little bit too fast for him to actually pull off any sort of Blade or Ruin King or dueling potential. But like you said, the dueling potential coming in from the item is going to be very strong. Hopefully able to deal with Pride because at this point of time, he absolutely cannot deal with Pride at all. So, and that's a rather uh, awkward situation for him to be in because what we expect from most Shona players is that they can be just excellent duelists, but they're just losing to pure one-to-one -one trades with Pride, and because of that, AHQ has the liberty to just move as they please as this four-man unit. They are not too afraid of the rotations coming down from the Saigon Jokers. Yeah, and the fact that QTV was in the bot lane dueling out with Pride, it just means that SAJ only has a four-man a four-man defense at mid, and Pride can come down at any time. Putting on that shield is definitely going to be a global pr presence for SAJ to actually consider. At uh, yeah, this point of time, AHQ once again putting pressure all across the map as they rotate up into the top lane. I see for Saigon Jokers now, if they want to regain their footing, this is the time for them to go now. They have to find the right position for themselves to go in and it'll make the hard engage happen. Yeah, and QTP actually sped up the dissonance and the burnout was considering going for the Dragon's Descent, but Actually. the disengage coming out from HQ, they kind of snuffed it out and Pride's doing the split push as the Shin, having the Stand United global presence itself is going to be very helpful. And I like the choice of lanes they're pushing now. They're allowing Pride to push down the bottom lane, whereas HQ was actually pressuring the top lane. So it's the furthest lane away they will, if they send someone to deal with Pride, Pride would definitely you know, be the backup that actually reaches first. That's right, so this, at this point of time, what do you think is the key consideration now for Saigon Jokers if they want to actually force the hard engage onto the HQ Esports Club? Yeah, what they can do is either shove a lane extremely hard, but the fact is that HQ still has that mid inner tur uh, outer turret up, so that's going to be a little bit hard for them to do. Or alternatively, if SAJ is willing to give up one of their inner turrets in the top or bot lane, but take a, mo a much major objective of that, maybe a Baron and win a team fight, that's going to be very detrimental for HQ. So I expect them to try to, you know, kill a few members of, of HQ, followed by, you know, taking some objectives after that. But at this point of time, I don't think they have anyone that can actually deal with the Pride split push. They don't have... The only one that can actually really disrupt Pride at this point of time is going to be QTV with the Dragon's Descent. Precisely. And it does look like at this point of time, HQ Esports Club are kind of just looking out for picks here as we do see Westlaw sniping away the blue buff away from Optimus. So 
once again a very detrimental flow for Optimus there because if you are taken away, you know, if the blue buff is taken away from you then you know you don't have your full cooldown reduction as well as the mana region that a Oriana player desperately needs. Yeah and look what um AHQ is doing. They saw that SAG was out of position and they sent Garner Devil just to put in some hot shots to the turret. Where's the dog? Going for safety. Will he use the explosive cast to knock safety back? Safety has that blood well. He's gonna be caught off by tr a few people, three people. Green tea will he still hit that dark binding. He flashed a little bit too early. Safety in a bunch of trouble now and just sniped with the explosive cast. Great play coming from HQ and safety. Why were you so out of position? Well, I, I don't really think that's a snipe though. It's just a pure barrage of a one solid explosive cast. Yeah, but but the fact that he <laughs> finished with the explosive cast, you know, ten style points for Westlow. Style points. Yeah. Style points for Westlow there, and we do see now Pride and Gunner Devil two men marking down into this bomb lane, and QTV now getting caught in an awkward position as we do see his, the entire rest Ooh. of the team backing him out in that sense. Yeah, Optimus taking a chunk of damage from the Dark Binding as well as the Barrel combo coming in from Westlow and Green Tea, and it seems that they are willing to siege this um, in bot in a turret and they are very likely going to get it Price keep popping the shield and Garner Devil taking a few pot shots this QTV ball delivery system has not happened just yet so let's just see if it actually can happen and QTV actually taking and tanking some damage from the you know siege coming from HQ it does look like this ball delivery system is not working all too well for them as Westlock goes in with the explosive cast just for intimidation factor yeah, the fact that he has the blue buff and uh, the, his ultimate on such a low cooldown in itself is he can just spam explosive cast all day whenever he wants to. And precisely, um, you know, finishing up that death cap as well as that void stuff already, so a lot of damage is gonna come down for Westlaw in this amount of time. Yeah, it seems that the fourth dragon will be taken down, nearly sniping it out using the super mega death rocket there. And HQ picks up their fourth dragon of the game, extending their goal lead to about you know, 8,000 gold. So it's a very comfortable position to, for them to be in. And like we mentioned earlier, this is the result of you not fully utilizing your puzzle pieces like we would like to call it. Because if you don't have that wombo combo put on together, then you're just wasting your team composition in many senses. Yeah, we haven't seen SAJ pull off a 5-on-5 five five team fight perfectly. We always see them, either QTV or Optimus, being caught out of position and making a 4v5. And thus, they don't really want to go in for team fights. But if SAJ can actually come in with the Junior Ultimate, with the Optimus Ultimate in itself, Oriana and Annie, it's going to cause a lot of havoc to the team of HQ. Right, but honestly speaking, it's quite a difficult feat for them to try to do so because given the sense, HQ has been constantly denied... And, oh my goodness, Juni actually being pincered there by the entire team of HQ. He yeah, has to force the to, flash. Yeah, he has to force the flash there. Yeah, and, and you were talking about the vision control. Let's, let's take a look at how HQ kind of sees the map. It's the entirety of the blue side jungle is being lit up here and on the side of SAJ, they just barely get a little bit of vision waiting. We're actually waiting for Green Tea to walk into these brushes and to clear these wards, but not just yet. So we may see that happen soon. He spots one ward, we'll start to take that out very soon. And no, he doesn't spot the ward in this brush here. That's right, that's the thing though for Saigon Jokers. It's quite difficult for them to try to flank HQ because they have And Juni gets caught out, he gets hit up by the knockout combo. The culling will come in, and Garner Devil does pick up the kill onto. Juni, so there's gonna be another kill on the side of AHQ Esports. Juni being caught out there just because he wanted to put a ward down. That's right, the ultimate sacrifice of the supports. Always, always, you know, when you put a ward down, sometimes you'll be caught in an awkward position and you'll be caught out there. As we do see QTB now, he is the one in the sort of an awkward position as he is looking to, yep, just take out the one lane turret, but at the same time, AHQ. Up and, and a great shortwave combo with the Super Mega Death Rocket does pick up Green Tea. QTV will back off from that and SAJ successfully defends their inhibitor turret from AHQ. So SAJ going to be very happy from that fight. Right, we do see a glimpse of that Wombo combo that we have been talking about all game. But finally, they kind of pulled something like that off and you know, they managed to push AHQ away. And I think it was at a point where AHQ didn't expect it as well. It's like, well, I, we have to back it out now. We didn't know they could, you know, do so much for us. Yeah, it seems that they want to bait out this Baron attempt, but I think Nas will use the fi use this, this, the flag to actually check out the Baron attempt. And we're still taking a little bit of damage coming from SAJ. SAJ major siege this middle outer turret. 
Let's see how much damage they can put on this this attempt. Not much damage at all. In, in fact, the clear coming from Garner Devil as well as Westdor going to deter them from any sort of siege attempt. But, and the thing about Jinx as well is it's quite difficult for you to siege up against such a heavy burst composition. Given the sense that you know when you switch into that power platform, yes, you do have an immense amount of attack speed. You are able to take out Terra relatively e very easily, but in a sense, if you are standing so close to the range to your opponents, then you'll be easily caught up by some of the key initiations coming in from HQ Esports Club. Yeah, and one of the main issues with what SAJ needs now is that what SAJ wants is a team fight, but HQ is not giving any of that at all. They're not even giving SAJ a single inch to actually go in for any sort of an engagement. And the problem is they don't have any form of hard initiate safety. Yes, safety can slow someone down and they can pick off that one person. QTV hasn't really gone for that Dragon's Descent into the Shockwave combo, so w only when we see that will we see SAJ actually pull off any sort of team fight that's happening. But the positioning coming out from the entire of HQ itself has been phenomenal. They are, they are unwilling to be caught out at all. That's right, but that's the other issue as well for HQ Esports Club. Sure, they are not giving Saigon Jokers any form of team fight, but you know, for them to try to take out a, a next further objective, they have to try to you know, kind of pick someone off or wait for a mistake coming in from the Saigon Jokers. Because if you look at their team composition now, it's not exactly the best when you want to siege up against a turret. So that's the key problem here, I would say. Yeah, so both teams are actually just waiting for one of the teams to actually make a mistake. SAJ wants HQ to group up, but HQ, you know, will not have any of that. Hopefully can use the Kragas Barrel to actually disrupt the entire team and pick off one or two champions in the process. That's right. That's the thing though, because they can still send Prides to kind of split push on themselves, but at the same time, Saigon Jokers do have a response to that coming in from QTV. You can just send the Half Dragon to run around the map and shove up the wave as you please. But this time around, we do see HQ Esports Club making quick work onto Baron here. It does look like Saigon Jokers will be around the area to kind of contest for that. Yeah, and the engage does come in a two-man beautiful shot with Garner Devil taken down very low. West though also very low, but the fact is that Nas and Price are actually disrupting the entire backline. QTV will join the fight very soon. No one has gone down on the side of HQ. West though taken down very low. The Dragon's Descent and the Flash coming in, but it's, QTV is exhausted. Will West though survive? West though still has that Guardian Angel and it's being popped right now. The Dragon will try to create as much disruption as possible. The shutdown goal goes to QTV. Price decides to Flash and Shadow Dash away. D Super Mega Death Rocket misses and Price will get out there with the skin of his teeth. Right, so it was a one for one trade overall for Psycho Jokers and HQ Esports Club. But I would say, you know, for Psycho Jokers there, it was a worthwhile trade because the only member that went out was Juni and Westlock is now out of the picture. Yeah, and the fact that Gragas has already used the explosive cast gives SAJ the advantage to actually pick up this dragon and Archie having the Blood Duster, Last Whisper and Phantom Dancer is going to put on a significant amount of damage onto the Baron. So all five members seem to have that Baron buff, so SAJ is going to be very happy with that fight. That's right, and not to forget, you know, in that Baron attempt, we do have the Mighty Hands of Smite as well as that Mighty Mouth of Consume there, so a lot of Mighty mechanisms to take out that Baron Asher. Mighty fine words you have Mighty there, Chris. Fine. Mighty fine. So, I think that was a very good shockwave coming in from Optimus. I, we haven't seen such spectacular 2k ELO shockwave or Challenger tier shockwave just yet. But the fact that he has used that shockwave to actually take down Westdor and Garner Devil very low, forcing the entire of AHQ to actually disengage from the fight. But we saw Prides and Nas actually doing a lot of damage to the backline of Archie as well as Juni, actually taking out Juni in the process, but you know, H HQ didn't really come out of the top of that, but they are willing to take their fifth dragon of the game, so putting them, you know, even further ahead of the of the goal lead that they, they had. So, but they do have to approach this cautiously at this point of time because we saw what happened that you know what went down in the uh, the Baron pit what which was you know, Westlaw just going down right off the bat and if they don't approach this carefully then they might just fall into one of Saigon's Joker's trap because they do have a good amount of counter initiation as well. 
Yeah, so both teams try to lay out trap cards for each yeah, trap cards, man. to each to actually step on and activate. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we actually have QTV going on that split push. He has the Blade of the Ruin King already completed. So you were saying that QTV is going to be an exceptional duelist. So let's just see if Prides and QTV are going to meet up. Prides is actually trying to go for the Trinity Force. So he wants to be that duelist as well. So it seems like QTV may be the one that's trying to come up ahead of that fight. S senses that... You know, the entire of HQ is going to converge on here and decides to just use Burnout and back away. I think he's still going to be an irritating little dragon for now. That's right. And it's at this point of time where Saigon Jukers might want to start, you know, marching down one of the lanes to force one of the objectives because they do have that Baron buff advantage. And given their team fight potential as well, then as a 5v5, they have the upper hand. But at this point of time, they, it does look like they are contented to kind of just shove it out and make sure that all their lanes are in a comfortable position but I'm not too sure where, whether I agree with what they are doing here. Yeah, it seems that SAJ wants to actually try to use the Baron buff to their advantage but they don't see any openings and HQ isn't really giving them any sort of only Actually QTV being a boss right there trying to you know push prize out of the lane I think he manages to do it. Just shoves the entire bot lane you know to all the way to the inhibitor. I think HQ Esports Club are just happy to see what's going on now because they obviously know that Saigon Jokers with the Baron buff will stand the upper hand. So if they're not pushing, then they will just be happy sitting around to kind of deter them away from the lanes. Yeah, QTV in a little bit of a dangerous position does manage to get out from that pincer move coming in from HQ. And I think what SAJ are desperately needing right now is to take down this outer turret that's left standing. They are like, oh my god, it's a thorn at their side. They really want this turret to go down as much as possible. They're like, guys, we are the Baron buff. Let's take down this turret. Finally take down this turret for once. Right, and it's crucial that they do so as well because that's the only you know, standing point for them for them to start regaining vision control again because once they take it out then they will able to, they will be able to kind of move past the first turret range to go into HQ's jungle to wall it up and that will open up so much more possibilities for them for Shavana to come in for the flank or for them to kind of rotate around the map as well. Yeah and the gold difference on both sides actually most of the gold difference is coming in for the support of HQ as well as Westlo who has 15,000 gold compared to the 13,000 on Optimus and if we actually look at the two ADCs, both ADCs are going to punish the tanks very strong. We know very strongly, they both have an Infinity Edge, the Blood Duster and the Last Whisper, as well as the Phantom Dancer already completed on the Archie. And on the side of Guarded Devil, he has the Trinity Force, Blade of the Ruin King, Infinity Edge, as well as the Last Whisper. So both ADCs are going to be, you know, dishing out a world of hurt to any sort of opponent they face. Right, speaking about the marksman and the mid lane players as well, I have to give props up to Archie as well as Optimus. They haven't been finding the greatest kill streaks of this game so far, but they have done a very, very good job in keeping in farm together with their opposing laners. So, I mean, all this gold, little gold difference are just purely from kills as well as objective difference. Yeah, and look at that. We have the Trinity Force already completed onto Pride, so that's going to be very scary indeed. There we go, HP Esports Club, they are gathering up in the mid lane, looking to siege up this inhibitor turret as soon as they can. Yeah, the Baron buff is already worn out. Baron and Dragon will be up in another two minutes time, and SAJ kind of just wasted that Baron buff completely, not able to take any sort of objectives from that, but they're all going to hit item threshold very soon. We're already 43 minutes into the game, and the goal difference is only about 5,000 gold. That's right, that's the problem when it comes to HQ Esports Club as well. We call them the early game masters, and that's because of that, because once it hits a certain point, and if they're not in a superbly commanding lead, then they will find themselves often you know, in a very difficult position to try to close out the game. So they have kind of, for Saigon Jukers, it's a very good deal on their part, because they have just nullified away their early game disadvantages. So it does look like both teams will go to a close six item group before we finally start to see something happening. Yeah, we should expect the next fight to either happen somewhere around Baron. And let's just see which team can, you know, try to set up a trap for... Because that's kind of been the team for the game so far. HQ baiting out Baron and, you know, killing S SAJ in the process earlier. But SAJ was the one who actually managed to capitalize on the HQ Baron attempt and kind of destroy them, taking out the Baron later on. 
right? It does look like both teams are kind of playing this game of chess where they might be overthinking it as well, you know. They are just overly cautious at some part of time. That's why we don't see a lot of action across the board. But even if it was me, I'll, sometimes I'll just YOLO and just go in. Oh, yeah. but, it, but, but, but if it was Fish, yeah. he would say no Baron. Yeah, no I mean, Baron not for all. Baron, but you know, just for the team fight. Oh, for the team fight, yes. Yeah, just YOLO and go in. But I guess that's why I'm not the pro player. <laughs> Well, we, we certainly aren't pro players, that's why we are commentating on this match at this point of time. And QTP and Pride actually dueling it up in the top lane, both champions taking a little bit of damage. So QTP very happy to just du duke it out with Pride. And Green Tea using the Oracles, trying to clear up the map as much as possible. And look at the amount of pink wards coming in from HQ. So many pink wards. One, two, three. Oh my goodness. Like pink wards all around the map. Come grab some, it's one for one. One for one pink wards, huh? What, what if the shopkeeper actually has a sale one day? Wow, I, I would love it like Infinity Edge at half price. Infinity Edge at half price, sure. Right. Or the dev cap, oh. buy two, get one free. Second hand sale, you Second sell your item sell. and sell it to the enemy <laughs> for a profit. <laughs> uh, so, or you, you know, you can have some of the champions kind of bid for it. Oh yeah, you yeah, can have a bidding session. The, yeah, bid pause the game, the pause the game and start the bidding. Jeez. Starting at five gold. Starting at five gold. 100 gold per race. Oh gosh. Anyway, look at the amount of wards coming in for uh, SAJ as well. They do not want any sort of invade or, you know, they just want the ward control as much around Baron, especially around the blue buff entrance towards Baron in itself. And this ward doesn't spot out the... Oh... The green the ward. Sneaky ward sneaky corner. Sneaky ward corner there. So... We have a little sneaky ward traps coming in as well. So, if so tips for the players who are watching at this point of time. Where to place a ward so that the pink ward won't spot it out. Yeah. So HQ going to go in for this really, really low inhibitor turret. And I think they may be able to pick it up. Right, I'm starting to think at this point of time, it's going to be who manages to break the ice first will be the one coming up on top. And I suppose why both teams are playing so cautiously is because this match matters so much to them. Between these two teams, if Saigon Jokers manage to win this one, then they will be in the standing to contest for the second seed. Yeah, they, they will at least contest for the knockout stage, which is very important because the teams kind of get a clean slate coming into knockout stage. Yes, you face one of the top seeded teams in the uh, other group, right. but it's kind of all for nothing at that point of time because it's going to be a best of three. Whoever wins that best of three is going to move on to the next round and everyone's just going to kind of forget what kind of group standings you were in, no matter what. I think it kind of just reminds me back then in the NALCS, back then, um, Team Coast GGU, back then they were known as Good Game University. They had a rather similar situation as well. They were sixth in the group stages, but because they played phenomenally during the knockout stages, they managed to come on top in second position in the NALCS spring season. So, I mean, in that sense, you cannot count out any of these teams in the Barona Premier League. Yeah, and so, SAJ yeah. as well as HQ both playing extremely passively this game. It's going to hit a 50-minute, 60-minute game, I, I suppose. The Baron has been up for quite some time already. And, you know, the goal difference is still just about hovering at around 6,000 gold. We may see a six item team fight very shortly. Right, when we do have those six items, so all these numbers are not going to matter too much. That's when we say, it's kind of like age, you know, it just doesn't matter at... Once it passes a certain time though. Well, yeah, once it passes a certain time, it's amazing. 50 minutes into the game, and the middle inhibitor turret, uh, sorry, the middle outer turret is still up. That's, you know, that's just mind-blowing in itself. Mind-blowing indeed, and HQ Esports Cup still playing rather passively in this sense, so... I think both teams are just waiting to spot out a position and maybe wait for a skill shot to land before wanting to go in full splash then. This time around, between Archie and Optimus, both of them finishing up that Garden Angels, we have multiple lives on both teams. Yeah, multiple lives indeed. And look at the items coming in from both Prides as well as QTV. They're kind of mirroring each other except for the Trinity, Trinity Force and the um, Blade of Ruin King coming out from them because every other item is the same. So it's, it's going to be, oh my goodness, it's going to be crazy once the team fight happens. But I think it's going to be one big fight to determine what happens. And you do see QTV now brawling it out with Pride and look at the amount of health bar that Pride is sitting on at this point of time. So tanky by himself. That's one tanky shin right there. So, and you see they laid out the trap card there. Will HQ actually step on the trap card? It doesn't seem that that's the case. QTV actually 
Teleport's back and may join that 5v5 team fight that's about to break up very shortly. HQ still wanting to power their way through down the mid lane, you know. That pink ball there kind of spot out that trap card, so well, SAJ just decides to back off. Precautionary of action there to spot out the trap card. Precautionary indeed. And QTP is just gonna, you know, kind of try to take out this top wave, but may be caught out. Very dangerous position for him to be in. Nas, Green Tea, and Garner Devil. Westo coming in as well. Will he use the explosive castle to actually knock him back? No, QTP just decides to back off. They are rotating to this turret. Will SAJ be able to defend this turret? The ball delivery system make it come in the. However, he gets dark binding, and you know, QTP can't just follow up at all, even though he has the ball on him. Right, I kind of just think that both teams are just so cautious at this point of time. It does seem like it's very hard for either team to get in with the advantage over the other. So I think it's going to be the mistakes of either team to kind of determine this game at this point of time. Yeah, so they wanted to start the dragon there, but uh, the baron there, but it seems that, you know, they are just thinking twice about it. Westall is the one with the oracles this time. He, he does have his six items up already up, so he's going to be the man carrying the oracles this game. Right, not only does he on. have a six item build, he has gone for a rather interesting build on himself as well, having that Morello Nomicon. So, I mean, usually when you have that Morello Nomicon, it's against a lot of those champions who have a lot of high healing abilities, but in the sense, I'm not sure why he picked it up this time, but you know, the one way to kind of rationalize with it is that Archie can lifesteal his health rather rapidly with that Pao Pao being stacked up. So in a sense, reduced healing will help deal with that. Yeah, not forgetting that the Morel Nomicon as well as the Athene's Unholy Grail will give him full cooldown reduction as ah, well. Ah, precisely. There's that as well. So in a sense, no, no sense, uh, I mean, no sense, no harm getting that. Yeah, it seems that both teams are just, you know, just milling it out. We, it's, it's been a story of the game. Four members fighting it out together, just, you know, poking heads at each other, and QTV and Price just, you know, doing the little tango up in their own solo lanes, respectively. That's right, very, very cautious gameplay coming in from both teams. And I cannot count the amount of wards that have been murdered, brutally massacred in this game. Yeah, this, uh, this will be one of our last time seeing wards murdered so brutally because in the Season 4 patch we only get, gonna get... Oh my goodness, Juni taken down so extremely low. Nas actually goes in, Juni's still alive and Nas being so extremely tanky. Safety on the side, the Cataclysm comes in, the Flash, Shadow Dash comes in onto Optimus. Optimus still alive as well, the first kill goes down to Westdor taking out both Juni as well as Safety. Archie in a world of hurt now, a great shortwave coming in. Price taken down extremely low, Archie still alive. The Super Mega Death Rocket actually airballs and now Garner Devil as well as Archie duking now Archie going with the triple kill. Will he get a quadra kill? He goes in and SAJ Aww. Optimus picks up the kill onto Green Tea and Naz is the only one alive standing on the side of HQ. That was an extremely messy team fight. So I thought it was the window of opportunity for HQ Esports Club as they caught Juni way out of position, but this time around, you know, QTV together with Archie and Optimus just put off this clutch play. I like the Optimus shockwave over the edge thing that kind of just secured them the advantage as we go into a replay to see what exactly what happened. So it all started out with Juni kind of face checking here. So he takes a whole bunch of damage. So Nace dragging himself back into the team fight, but just to only to be caught with the Tibbers there. So Stan United gets popped as well. So Nace going right back into the fray and there we go. Price joining the team fight and slam dunk onto Optimus there. So a lot of focus puts out down onto Optimus, but at the same time, you know, safety and QTV was able to zone out the entire lines of HQ Esports Club there. So QTV zoning out Garnet Devil all together. And you know, somewhere after this replay, we did see the Optimus pull off that great shockwave over the ledge thing that was in Hidden Vision as well. That was the turning point of the fight. And you know, a very good Awareness coming in from Archie there to pick up the triple kill to just equalize all of that. Yeah, definitely. And it seems that that fight itself allowed Archie to pick up a bunch of kills and he's now at his full item build as well. Right, and with that, they pull the gold advantage and the gold difference back to about 3,000. And I would say at this point of time, it's anyone's game. Yeah, it's definitely anyone's game. And the good thing that came out from that fight is that Optimus still has his Guardian Angel up as well as Archie, but Westdoor 
doesn't have his Gunner's Angel anymore. I think he sold an item to get his Deathfire Grass. He sold a Morello Nomicon, so... That's right. Doesn't need that cooldown reduction anymore once the insane amount of burst damage that will come out from the Deathfire Grass combination on top of his rotations in itself. And it seems that both a HQ and SAJ are going to go back to this little dance that they've been having all game. Uh, but Optimus choosing to go for a different build, having that Zonia's Hourglass, so he will have the advantage for one or two more extra spell rotations, and I wonder whether that will be the difference that will cause the, or break the game. SAJ being very aggressive. This is unlike what they're having. QTV is going to tank up the entire turret. The explosive cast comes up, doesn't knock anyone into the fray at this point of time. A lot of damage being put out. Juni, Optimus, and Archie taken down extremely low, but. Juni still has that stun, still has that flash, may go in for a flash tip is very shortly. QTV just gonna take it, Naz goes in a flag toss combo with the shun out. The absolute zero being popped, Optimus being caught out there, Naz taken down extremely low, Pride on the back, the short wave only hits Pride, Greasy taken down extremely low, the show cycles will not pop. And Juni is the only one that goes out with that fight. Price taking off very low. Garden Devil is the next one to fall. The Quadra the Kill comes out from RG. Will he chase, continue to chase all Wesson? No, Aww. they decide to take the turret instead. They may turn for the inhibitor and hopefully they can take the game out of this because the death timers are still very low. Will SAJ decide to take the turret? Yes, they do. Look at the extreme amount of shields coming in. The Amount of damage coming in from Juni is extremely high as uh, from Archie is extremely high as well. Does take down Westall, may go down safety, takes one turret shot. Westall picks up that kill onto safety. QTV will try to go in for Westall as well. And Archie as well as QTV will take the game for SAJ. So SAJ does wow. beat HQ Esports and what an upset today. That's right. I, I am kind of speechless.